Hi, I'm David, your developer on Duty. Excellent news today. Meters Llama 3 LLM is out. Let's have a look. Just for those who don't know what Llama is, it's a large language model from Meta and its weights are available for everyone to download. And you can probably even run it locally depending on your machine, at least the smaller version of it. So let's see how it compares to other LLMs like for example Mistral. The key takeaways. It's state of the art, they call it open source, but that's not entirely correct. Its license prohibits some use cases, but most of us should be able to use it, even commercially, unless you have more than 700 million monthly active users or you're involved in some illegal activity. But to be safe, uh, read the license, but you're most probably okay. So the other key takeaways are, in my point of view, not so much important. It's available on various cloud providers soon, and they developed it in a responsible way, which is fine. And but here they say that they will introduce new capabilities and even longer context windows, which is very great because the current one seems to be quite limited, but more on that later. So here they say it comes in an 8 billion and a 70 billion parameter version. And I'm especially interested in the 8 billion one because I can definitely run it locally on my M1 Mac and it's pretty darn fast. Here you can see some of the benchmarks in comparisons to other models, for example, Google Gamma or Mistral AI's Mistral 7B Instruct. And in all of those, Llama 3 is significantly better, also taking into account that it has 1 billion more parameters than the other two contenders. And for the Llama 7B, 70B version, it seems quite comparable to Google's Gemini Pro 1.5 and Anthropic's Claude 3 Sonnet. But take all these benchmarks with a grain of salt, it should just give you a rough idea on its performance, but real life usage is more important. I'm especially eager to know how it competes in the chatbot arena where humans decide upon the best answers and where an ELO score can be computed. Meta also knows about these limitations and so they let human testers decide which answers they like more. And to be fair, and not to overfit their models on this evaluation set that didn't make it known to their LLMs. And you can see in the 70B versions here that they are quite comparative, at least with the other LLMs like Close Sonnet, Mistral Medium, GPT-3.5, and also, of course, Metas Lama 2. And in most of the cases, the human testers liked the, the answers of Lama 3 more than the other models. Regarding the model architecture, they use a relatively standard decoder-only transformer architecture and compared to Llama 2, their tokenizer has a vocabulary of 128,000 tokens. And what surprises me a bit is that they train their model in sequences of about 8k tokens, but they also stated that in future versions they will increase the context window. The training data is really impressive. They trained Llama 3 on 15 trillion tokens. This is seven times larger than the data used for Llama 2, including four times more code. Remember in Llama 2, they were quite hesitant to include coding training data because they thought it wouldn't fit their use case so well. Think of WhatsApp, where users typically don't ask coding related questions. But they figured out that the reasoning capabilities are a lot better if the training data also includes code. So it's good to see that they do this now from the start. But that's not all. They are also currently training a 400 billion parameters model that might be even close to GPT-4. Exciting times. So let's get our hands on it. You can use, for example, Olama to easily run this model locally on your machine. If you have a powerful machine, you go to olama.com check out the models here it's already featured and you can use olama run llama 3 for it to download and run the model i'm on an m1 mac system so i won't probably be able to run the 70 billion parameters model but i can definitely run the 8 billion parameters model so that should be okay for let's say simple use cases and shameless plug i also use my own plugin called chan nvim for neovim and with that plugin, you can run your LLM locally 
and use your text editor to let's say highlight text and then ask questions about it or generate text in your editor. It's a little bit easier than running Olama as a standalone process. And of course you'll find all links in the video description. So you can check it out and run it yourself. Just as a heads up, there seems to be a small bug in the Olama version of the instruct model of Llama 3. So if I run it, the tokens will not stop. So if I ask what is one plus one, you can see it will just generate tokens, a lot of them, instead of just answering the questions. This bug does not appear in the non-instruct version. So from now on, I'm going to use this one. So here, if I run it, so the initial starting time is a bit long, but then you can see the answer comes right away. So let's set it up in my NeoVim instance. I use here my Gen Envim plugin with the options to set the model to Llama 3. And now we're good to go. So one sample use case is you have a bunch of text and you just want to ask questions about this text. So in this example, we can go on Hacker News, check out the Llama 3 news article, click on comments and just copy all this text in a text document. So let's just paste it here in this file. We can highlight this and invoke gen.envim and now we can say summarize, for example, to get a summary of all these comments. So <laughs> the model thinks that the discussion is about ChatGPT, which is not really the case. Uh, let's see and whether it has been nerfed or made less effective. The conversation started with someone saying that they were told by OpenAI CTO that ChatGPT was not nerfed, but some users claim to have noticed a decline in its performance. And then they're discussing the experience of ChatGPT and Claude. It could be that in these discussions, these topics were addressed. I'm not sure. Uh, let's see, GPT. I mean, it's mentioned in the comments, but the comments themselves are usually about Llama 3. Maybe they didn't mention it so often. Could be a problem of the model. Let's, let's take a smaller piece of text here and ask, uh, make a summary. And in this case, it's definitely correct because I've read this comment before and the author is indeed expressing the gratitude towards Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg, which I completely agree. I think he's doing an excellent job in making the weights of Llama, uh, of the all the Llama models available. I think this benefits humanity as a whole, and many developers can really participate, develop upon this these large language models, and bring this whole community further. I think this is really, really great. So here in another comment by Modeless, um, the benchmarks of several LLMs were compared. So let's maybe ask Llama3, um, give an explanation of this benchmark. So it answers. And it indeed identified Llama 3 as a baseline model, Llama 370B, an improved version of Llama 3 with a larger 70 billion parameter model, and GPT-4, a more advanced language model. And by comparing the scores, you can see that GPT-4 generally outperforms the other two models on most benchmarks, indicating its superior capabilities in understanding and generating human-like text, which is correct, but Obviously, this is the case because here GPT-4 was compared to the 8 billion and 70 billion variant and obviously GPT-4 is better. But it's in some of these benchmarks pretty close. Not all of them, but it's some of them. So let's now do the same exercise with the Reddit thread on Llama 3. So let's just copy that text and put it into Reddit MD. 
and maybe get rid of the bottom here and just ask what is the general opinion on Llama 3. Let's see. So this time it identified that it's a discussion about Meta's AI new model, Llama 3. The conversation is centered around the model's impressive benchmarks and its potential to revolutionize natural language processing. Highlights are infinite context. It's mentioned that the new model can handle infinite context, which might make it more effective for certain tasks. Well, this is not the case. And I'm not sure it was part of the conversation on Reddit. Benchmarking, the Llama 3 model has achieved impressive results on various benchmark tests, including the MMLU and instruction tuned model. I'm not sure if MMLU stands for Multimodal Machine Learning Universe. That's definitely not the case. Um, but they were talking about benchmarking new features. The conversation also touches on new capabilities being introduced in the upcoming months, such as longer context windows and multimodal versions. So the longer context window is definitely true. Comparison to other models, some users are comparing Llama 3 to other AI models like OpenAI's DALI and Meta's own Llama 2. I'm not sure if they compare it to OpenAI's DALI. I think that might not be the case in this Reddit discussion because DALI is of course an image generator. Overall, the discussion is quite enthusiastic about the potential of Llama 3 with many users expressing their excitement and anticipation for what this new model can achieve. Okay, that sounds reasonable. At least the last sentence, the stuff in the middle, not so much. So let's check out another use case of LLMs running locally, which I personally use quite often. This is improving the grammar or spelling of some text. So here I copy pasted some text from Wikipedia about quantum mechanics. So let's just um, create some typos, for example, here that enforces its entire departure that enforces it entire departure from classical lines of thought. And let's say we have also spelling error computing. And let's just highlight it and say improve grammar and spelling. So now it replaces the text with the improved variant. And you can see the mistakes were fixed both here and here. So this seems to work quite well. So let's also try to summarize this because I think the previous exercises didn't really work well because it was maybe too long, but with smaller text, it can do some summarizations in a, in a better way. Uh, and I can also say, make it more concise. Quantum entanglement, a phenomenon where interacting particles become blah, blah, blah. That seems probably to be okay. Yeah, okay. I mean, it's, it's correct and represents the text above. So this also seems to pass. So maybe explain it like a five-year-old. Okay, that seems to be reasonably well explained to a five-year-old. I'm not reading this whole text, but seems to work. Sometimes I also like when text is a bit more structured, so I can highlight it and say make list. And you can see this task was solved by the Llama 3 model quite easily. So let's also see its coding abilities. I have here the plugin for Gen and Vim itself. So let's just highlight this function, create window, and just ask, explain this code to me. So it's a Lua script, that is correct, for NeoVim, a popular code editor, which is also correct. And it defines a function, create window, that creates or updates a window in NeoVim. Here's a breakdown of what the code does. So the function has two arguments, which is correct. And the main logic is it deletes any existing result buffer, creates a new result buffer with a markdown file type, sets up options for this buffer, including the window configuration and creates a floating window to display the result buffer using Vim API and Vim Open Win. 
that seems correct. So I'm quite astounded that this got it right. I will definitely have an eye on this model. It really seems promising, even though the 8B version still has problems with some tasks. For example, as you saw, summarizing very large threads. It's already quite capable and already useful for everyday minor tasks, especially when you're writing text. I'm curious about various fine tunes, which happened en masse for previous Llama versions, and it will surely happen now. These are really exciting times, and I can't wait what comes out next. What's your opinion, opinion on Llama 3? Please post it in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned.